Yo best, yo best, yo best. That shit crazy. Welcome everybody to All Even Live exclusive. My name is Barry Grant Jr., host of the All Even Podcast. To my left is Mike Guido, host of Guido's Gridiron Blitz. Down at the bottom is Matt the Great Catarizzolo. And who we have on the show today is is recently retired LA Angel. Welcome to the show, Ty Buttry. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Recently retired. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I never use the word retire, but that's kind of, I guess, um, walking away, stepping away, retired. I guess it's yeah. all kind of the same thing. So, Definitely. yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Definitely, man. So, that, like, you know, your story, Ty, is extremely interesting. And I, I don't want to paraphrase for you. I don't want to do anything for you. So, you know, I definitely want you to go ahead and, and kind of tell your own story. Yeah, it was, um, no, nah, man, it, there's so much that goes into that decision that I think from the public, it was definitely um, the public and even the organization. It caught a lot of people by surprise. It caught my family by surprise. It even right. caught my wife, wife by surprise. So, um, I mean, if you, I don't know how you guys want me to kind of start. I can, you know, give you kind of an overlay leading up to it, but man, um, it was just, it was something that the more and more that time went on, you know, the way COVID unfolded, the fans leaving, me working on myself mentally a lot over the years, it was all kind of a, um, it just kind of boiled down to this final decision that I felt like I just needed to make. And I felt like I was kind of living a lie. And when I say that, that's, you know, I don't mean exactly living a lie like I'm out there lying to the people and the fans and everything I just I've always been one that's really prided myself and kind of beating to my own drum and following my heart and not really caring what people uh, think and it just got to the point where I started kind of weighing options I started kind of looking at where I was where I wanted to to be and I didn't feel baseball was really lining up with that and I didn't feel where I was at mentally um was kind of where I wanted to continue down. And I just, life short, man. And that's the one thing kind of COVID taught me, you know, life short and happiness is hard to find nowadays. And if you're not chasing happiness, if you're not chasing true passion, um, I think we do a lot. I think you're doing a big disservice to yourself. And I think you're doing a disservice to your friends and your community around you. Um, as much as I hate to piss away 24 years of, freaking hard work man it just was um I mean because that's ultimately what I did is I mean all those hours in the gym training journaling I mean the amount of time and uh, focus and work that I put into that sport was unbelievable but at what point do you know you start sacrificing your own happiness for money and fame and that's kind of what I mean I could go down a rabbit hole with that but like that was kind of the um grand scheme of kind of how my thought process was going into that decision. Definitely. Real quick, Mike. Um, so, Ty, I, it, listen, I completely agree with you and I support your decision. And kudos to you for doing that because it really takes a lot to make that decision because you've gotten to this level. You know, people dream of being here. And you decided that, listen, this is not, <clears throat> this is not what, what I want. Now, burnout is a real thing. You know, burnout and everything and every phase of life is, is something podcasting, you know, your career, whatever it is. So I understand that. But was there something even as a kid where you knew that you were good at something, but it wasn't like a passion for you? Like some people can be able to be good at things, but they don't yeah. really care to do it. It's just that yeah. it, just, it, it just comes naturally to them. Was baseball kind of like that for you? 1000%. Um, man, I think back of when I was a kid and you got to understand my family um, is a very sports driven family. You know, my dad did everything out of love and did everything out of, you know, his best will intended. Um, but, you know, we had we had high standards and it was to always try your best. It was always to whatever, you, whatever you're going to do. It doesn't matter if you're a sports player. It doesn't matter if you play the piano. You just you don't quit and right. you give it your all. And right. so you know, as a young kid, you grow up. Um, I mean, if I could have 
redo if I could have redone the clock, I would have sat and played Halo 2 for the rest of my life. And been a I would have been I would have been better than Ninja, I promise you. I would have been the best video video game player out there. Right. Um, but you know, playing video games 10, 15 years ago um wasn't really the best use of time. And so my dad would, you know, he he uh he played baseball in the minor leagues with the Phillies for a little bit. My sister played college soccer. My other sister was a um really good high school volleyball player. So sports, you know, it was in the family. My mom, my whole side was sports driven. They had a prof- couple of professionals on their side. And so, you know, you grow up as a young kid and you want to, for me, at least, um, I grew up in a household was respect and treating people the right way was number one. And so, and, be, and being a nice person, you know, being a nice person. Um, and I started to kind of take, I, I'm a very, I guess you could say I'm, I'm a very simple person Yeah. and I am kind of what you see. I try to be authentic. I don't try to hide much. And I want, my biggest problem was growing up was I would always do everything to please everybody else and okay. not really please myself. Yeah. And so that's kind of, you know, you get a body six, six, you know, can throw a baseball very, very hard. Um, I was bigger than everyone growing up. I was, you know, stronger than everybody. I kind of had to go through my ups and downs, but you know, when, when you have this background, you have all these people telling you how good you're going to be your whole life. Um, and you start realizing, wait a second, I can make, you know, a couple million bucks out of high school and I don't have to go to college and I can just go pitch in the show. It's like, yeah, that's sign me up. Like that right. sounds cool. Why and it's not? like, yeah. yeah, why not? Like that's, but that's where it was kind of, that's kind of where it stopped was like, that sounds cool. Like, that's not what I really want to do. It's just, that sounds cool. Like, yeah, I want money. I want the recognition. I want to be in the show, but like, I'd be lying to you guys. If I told you I ever dreamed about being in the hall of fame, being an all-star, being a Cy Young award winner. Right. Um, I mean, I, you look at my career, even in the minor leagues, even little league, middle school, high school, I literally, it, this is like how my performance was. I would do great. I would get at the top. I would realize, eh, I'm good. I lose focus and I go back down. And then everyone say, oh, Ty sucks. Then I'd be like, oh, no, Ty's really good. And then I work my butt off, focus, get back up. Oh, I'm bored. Like there's there's video of me being interviewed. And like I get off the field and pitching against the A's and they're like, how'd you feel? I'm like, I felt really bored out there. And like I got done in my, in my locker and I'm like, Ty, why'd you, you can't tell people you're bored, right. man. Like right. you can't do that stuff. And so it just was like, my whole life, man, like trying to prove to everybody, like, no, like I am this good baseball player. I can do this stuff. Like, look at me. I want the attention on me, but wait, I don't want the attention. It just, it was, um, it was a process, man, but no, like it was, uh, something that you, like you said, like what kid would throw away the, you know, that career. And honestly, guys, before COVID, I would have never, would have never in a million years probably made this decision. Right. But that's when, I started kind of opening my eyes and kind of realizing, you know, there's some other stuff in this life that I want to accomplish. And I don't want to be 38 years old, you know, being retired. Sure. I may have $20 million. I may have a couple world series, but I'm 38 years old with no education, no other, you know, accomplishments in my life. And I'm just known to be a baseball player. And to me, that's not the path I wanted to go down. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. yeah it's, it, Barry kind of stole my question because I, <laughs> I was genuinely going to ask you, like, what was your relationship with baseball, you know, in, you know, from the beginning? Because, you know, it, listen, I grew up a baseball player also. I played varsity. I didn't play in college or anything like that. I wasn't that good. Um, but I also pitched and I topped out at 82 and, you know, <laughs> probably sat around 77 or something like that. And that was pretty much all my body could muster up. Um, so, and of course I had dreams of playing in the major leagues, but you just said, you know, that you never really had those aspirations. So, I mean, you kind of alluded to it before, but your relationship with baseball seemed to me, and I, I I don't want to take words out of your mouth, but it also, it, it felt like it was kind of forced. You felt like you had to play, right. Whether it was for your own reasons, whether it was to satisfy your family or something like that, it, it kind of felt like something that you you never really found an incredible amount of interest in. Was there ever a point in your life where you viewed baseball and you kind of got romantic about it? 
Man, um, that's, that's such a great question. And I can answer the first part by saying I never once watched baseball growing up. Wow. I never once cared wow. about watching sports. Wow. I went to one MLB game before I even got drafted. Um, to be, and I can admit this because I just don't really give a shit, but like <laughs> I, was, I was in the MLB guys my rookie year sitting in Dodgers bullpen and I didn't even know the teams on the American league and the national league. Like I didn't know who was in wow. the NL West. Like I didn't know who was in, like it kind of like got brought up in the bullpen and I kind of was like, Ty, like, shut up. Why'd you say that? Now they're going to ask you a question. <laughs> and the, the bullpen coach at the time was like, wait a second, wait, who'd you say was the NL West? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, no, nah, don't worry about it. And he's like, no, Ty, like say that again. And I'm like, um, yeah, like, I went home and literally studied all the teams in the American league and the national league. Like I just was never a fan. Like I don't, I don't have a sports team. I don't have a college team. Honestly, like I'm a big nerd trapped inside. Like, I don't want to say trap, but a big nerd's like mine inside like an athlete's body. Yeah. So, wow. you know, pitching is kind of a sport where it's like, yeah, you got to be athletic. But then again, it's like, listen, if you can throw a baseball really, really hard, you can get a job. Like yes, you don't yes. have to necessarily be this like Mike Trout or, you know, from Fernando Tatis super athlete. Like you, you can just be a guy that throws hard. You don't have to be a historian. You can just throw the, you know, throw, throw just the throw a hard 60 right. feet, six inches and let it go. And like, that's what, like, I tried to be technical with the game. I tried to get into the nuances, man. I'd write down journals um, every day. Like literally Ty, I would write down, three times every single day, Ty, enjoy baseball, Ty, enjoy baseball. Like I would walk, I would go to the field in 2019 and like put on a fake smile. Like I'd literally sit there and smile because I didn't like, I was trying all this, these mental techniques and stuff that I do, like these growth techniques to try to like get myself to like the game because I'm yeah. like, what's going on? Like, wow. E even 2019 when I, the first two months I was considered like one of the best relievers in the game as a rookie. And I remember feeling nothing, man. Like absolutely didn't feel a thing. Didn't feel accomplished. I just, I would stare at the clock and just wait for the games to be over with. And like, that's the reason why I preach so much about the fans because it's like, you know, you guys, I don't know if you see my social media. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I got some, I got some weird stuff going on, but like <laughs> Love the it, media, Love it. <laughs> yeah. Like just trying to be myself, but like the media and the fans, it's like, that's what kept me going. Like, um, I started really buying into the charity events and stuff in AAA. I used to be the guy that just sit on his phone in the locker. Um, and then I started saying yes to more, you know, charity events and like seeing these kids smiles, man, like instantly, if I was in a bad mood, didn't care if I had a bad game or what, it would, it would put me in a great mood. So, um, Mike, to answer your question, man, like it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was forced. My dad definitely didn't force it. He was very, he was very cool with me walking away. He just wants me to be happy. That was kind of like my own thing that I struggled with was like, even at a young, young age, like never speaking my truth and never really standing up for what I believed in. Right. And so it was a life serving everyone, like even the coaches, like I was the most coachable guy in the world to a fault because I wanted to make each coach, each person happy. It's like, right. I think back and I'm kind of like, man, how'd you even, you know, how did you even get there? <laughs> like you must have, <laughs> and it's, it was a battle, man. I got, I, I hit rock bottom in double A and started just kind of willing myself to figure it out. Yeah. You know, Ty, I'm, I'm so fascinated with the perception of professional athletes, either from fan bases or people within the sports media industry. And they're sometimes their tendency to forget to humanize these athletes. And I think it's super important to, to do that. It's, it's critical now to understand people and professional athletes and ones that make decisions like yours, extremely difficult ones to, to make. I I've read, I've read your, your Instagram post over and over again. And, and one line that stuck out to me so much was I'm so excited to finally become just Thai. And when I read that it, it really resonated. So do you think whenever you stepped out on a baseball field, were you being someone else? Did you feel like you were someone else, not just Thai? So no, man, I, I appreciate you picking up on that part um, because it actually I'm not trying to sound like superficial and arrogant, but like, even when you say that, it kind of like gives me like chills because it's like, 
that's what resonates with me so well. Mm. And that's what I've always prided myself in trying to be my whole life is trying to literally just be this funny, like I'm a weird guy, man. Like I really am. Like I've been made fun of my whole life, certain levels. Like I learned how to try to temper it a little bit. And that was ultimately kind of what, where I got to it is, you know, when you're in the big leagues, man, and you're a rookie, it's like, don't get me wrong. You want to have, there wants to, there needs to be some level of individuality, but like, you know, you got to keep your head down, man. You got to, you got to pound the pavement, you know, you got to, you got to show your respect. You got to earn it from the veterans. And like, I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it my way. And it's like, my way was just so different. And I didn't, that's when I say like, I didn't know how to be myself. Like I didn't know how to be just high, like in the big leagues. And like, that's when I started really asking myself questions like, well, why don't you care? Like, if you really love this game, like it should be easy to be yourself. Like the social media and stuff I'm doing, like I, it's fun. Like, I don't care if I'm eating pickles and doing weird shit. Like I'm just being myself. And like, it's fun to do that. And it's like, that's where I started really like, it's kind of, I woke up one morning and I turned to my wife and I'm just like, I'm effed up. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I got a pitch today and I just, there's no part of me that wants to show up to this field. And it was just finally, I think a boiling point of not want, not wanting to do something anymore that I didn't believe in. And it's like, I cared about the team and I cared about doing things for, you know, helping Pujols and Trout and Justin Upton and helping these guys, you know, make it to the championship. But like, I didn't want it for myself. And it's like, the amount of time and the sacrifices that goes into baseball, being away from your family for damn near 200 days out of the year. And, you know, you're at the, right. like, that's the one thing people don't understand. It's like, yeah, we get paid really well, but it's like, you also got to go through the minor leagues. Then you got to go through the, you know, three years of, you know, rookie time, then arbitration. And then if you're lucky and if you work the system the right way, <clears throat> then six years, you get your big payday. And it's like, I understand the payday scale is different. I'm not trying to say, but it is a huge sacrifice and that's 162 games. And then you throw another 40 on for spring training. And then you maybe throw another three weeks on for um, playoffs. And it's like, and then if you're in the off season, you're working out five days a week. And so right. it's just like, dude, at what level do you sit there? And I'm a guy that's like, I don't know how to do something and not work super hard. So like, I didn't want to play baseball. Like I wish I could have not taken it so seriously. Like, and so that's to answer your question, Matt, like um, the just Ty thing was like, Ty wants to pursue business. He wants to learn how to educate. Like he wants to be educated. He wants to be able to understand like writing and reading comprehension and like talk and like inspire people and lead people outside of just throwing a baseball and it's like that's what I was known for was tie the baseball player and it's like that never really at, like at first when everything was new in the minors like the first couple of years of the big leagues it was cool like you get paid very well you get to go on the cool jets you get to go to the hotels but it's like you guys know you get you know you buy a nice car that nice car is cool for a few months and then right. at the end of the day it's just a nice car just a car and yeah. it's like it's just a car and it's like that's where that's what I felt about baseball like it was cool. It was awesome. But then at the end of the day, it's like, whoa, I'm sitting in this bullpen for four out four get four hours a game, three, four hours a game, sitting at the field from one o'clock to eleven. I don't get to see my wife. I don't get to see my family. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right. So <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Now you said something also in your your Instagram post, Ty, about you know, people saying that you won't ever make it. And, you know, I want to I want to talk about the mental health side of things, because, you know, when we're kids, we're very impressionable. Like we we, we retain a lot of stuff and yeah. it kind of, you know, it's it kind point. of like molds us as adults. Now, do you feel like that that doubt that was placed on you as a child kind of just made you say, screw this, I'm just going to prove everybody wrong. I don't care about baseball, but I'm just going to show you the fact that how good I am, I can be able to make something and not care about it and just kind of put it in your face. Because 
as as children, we hear certain things, and like I said, it 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 kind of molds us as as adults, man. So you know, kind of yeah. talk about the mental health side of that uh, aspect of it, dude. One hundred percent. I mean, that's literally why I played the game. That's why that's why I worked so hard was right. to prove people wrong. It's like. I'm not trying to say I had all these haters and all these people saying, Ty, you're not going to make it to the MLB. But like when I said like 10 minutes ago about being made fun of at every level, like yeah. I didn't get made fun of for bad performance. Like I got made fun of for being my weird self. And like right. at a young, young age, you know, I was always asking questions, man. Like I was always the guy that like, no, wait, like ask the coach, say that again. Like, what do you mean? It's like at a young, a young kids, like you don't ask questions. You just, okay and do what you're told like dude that was my asking why is literally how i got myself um asking why is literally how i got myself to the big leagues because i learned like that's how i grow and so every single level like and you got to understand like not having a good fundamental you know iq of the game that also kind of was like wait you know you just get you get shit like it's normal i'm not sitting there being soft but like i was also just so accustomed to like my own little world that like I didn't understand why people couldn't just be themselves like why players like why everyone had to just put their head down and just be a baseball player like why couldn't we have fun and like do it too and so um no man like that's kind of where I think back and it's like you know the teacher comment like that was a big one um that was when like it kind of solidified in my head that, wow, like people really don't follow their dreams. Like people are so scared to ask questions, to strive for something more. It's like, wait, like, cause in my head, like I wanted from a young age to be in the MLB for the money and the fame. Like it was never for the glory of like the game and the love of the game. Like I just thought as a young kid having a cool job and a lot of money is badass. So like, absolutely. I literally was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the MLB. Like never want, like I was my biggest champion my whole life. Like I've always believed in myself more than anybody can ever imagine. And that's kind of that fire that always kept me going. And so like, I wanted that money and that fame so bad that like that was, and that's why I said like, it's a short term motivator. Yeah. It was a huge motivator. Like it did help me get to where I was at, but like, that's where I would use, I was very, like cognizant and aware and aware of when people would kind of like throw jabs or like say something. And I would, it's kind of like, I would jump to that and use that as more fuel. And so that's where, like, I remember one time my dad, I was leaning over the staircase in the sixth grade and I, the, um, you know, this was before the teacher's comment, but like, you know, my dad was my hero. My dad and I put so much work and hours into this game and like, I never wanted to disappoint anybody and I especially didn't want to disappoint my dad. And I remember leaning over the staircase and hearing my dad tell my mom that, you know, I just don't think he wants it. Like, Mm. I don't think baseball's, you know, and I I remember literally leaning over and hearing him say that. And he was, but he was right. Like I was playing video games. I was playing, you know, outside of my friends, riding ATVs. Like I told, like, I didn't care about watching. Like he was, would always tell me, Ty, you need to, yeah like he knew he's like you need to watch you need to watch baseball you need to watch baseball no okay like uh, like he would try to play baseball games with me because he saw such a you know he saw my body he saw what I could do it's like man like what's going on with this what's going on my son like why is he not (laughs) what like what's not clicking and I remember that next day I went out and um dude I hit off the tee like three hours the next day and then I did it again and then I did it again and then I started working harder and taking it serious but like I was doing it to show like no like I am going to be this baseball player like I am going to do this and so it was just it was that you know mixed with then I got into high school and I found a coach that taught me a lot about discipline and work ethic um and I luckily had some really good coaches that really pushed me I'm a big I love accountability I love accountability though because I'm a huge people pleaser and I like to like use others like I like to use others as my own strength and so that's kind of where that kind of came from and then the minor leagues it's like wait a second you guys gave me all this money Boston and I suck nah like no I don't suck like trust me I'm gonna figure it out and I did and I got up to a good level I fell got up to a good level and fell it's like 
that's just kind of like everything in a nutshell, I guess. But yeah, like it was definitely using other people's, there wasn't hate. Like it wasn't like I had a group of haters. It just was like doubters, like people right. that I hate even to this day, like do not doubt me. Like, please don't doubt me. Cause I promise you, if you doubt me, like I will prove you wrong. Like that's all I know how to do now. You know? Yeah. I'm like that too, Ty. I'm like that. Too, yeah. So yeah. Good. Yeah, good. You. you know, it, it's kind of interesting to me listening to you because you know, it, you just, you didn't care about baseball. Right. And that's per, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just not a thing for you. Yeah. But do you ever like to, to yourself, honestly, like, do you ever think to yourself, like what you could have done if you did care about baseball, right? Cause you, you had worked hard for, to begin with. And, you know, I, I'm curious if that, does that ever, you know, run through your mind of, you know, it, could I have been, ridiculous like way better than i already i mean you, you know you made it to the big leagues and you were pretty darn good so you know yeah maybe it doesn't but did do you ever think like if i had actually sat there and absorbed the game and really cared about what was going on i could have been absolutely ridiculous or is that just like you know not really a thought oh it's it's definitely a thought man because that's the one thing i've noticed from like the greats that i've played with like the coolest thing that these guys at a high level can do is they can treat baseball like a game. Like they can literally treat it like it's a, like it's a video game. And like, I think back of playing Halo two and like, you know, games and like call of duty board games. Like I was extremely competitive with those. Like I would get angry if I lost and then I would be able to just kind of brush it off my shoulder 10 minutes later and just be like, crap. And then I, and then I would just be good at it again the next time. It's like, that's kind of so like to answer your question that's kind of like how my thought process was is like yeah like if I loved baseball then I would have learned like I wouldn't have treated it life or death man like you got you guys don't understand like I would sit there and feel bad for striking guys out because I'm like damn like that guy really cares about like (laughs) shit man like (laughs) he needed to get hit like I don't really care like when I would do bad it's because I would feel bad that I let the fans down or I let my team down and it's like I always wanted I'm like crap now I'm not going to make it to the big leagues and now I'm not going to be able to prove everybody that I am this good baseball player but like it was never once to prove to myself it was and that's where it's like that's where I got it really twisted was like yeah like I do think about man if I would have actually loved the game of baseball and I would have been able to treat it like a game of baseball dude like the sky would have been it, it would have been the limp, like yeah. it would have been limitless, dude. Like I would have, it just would have been, it would have been a, a hobby, a passion. Like I'm working on a few things right now. And it's like, I wake up every day with just this motivation to just continue to like go and dominate. And it's like, I didn't have that with baseball. Like I didn't care about that. Like I didn't care about, you know, I cared about the team and I love the culture, but like the business side, man, it's just like, I got so caught up in like focusing on that stuff. And not focusing on playing that, you know, it just, man, like I, I will say though, like the one thing about baseball that was, that's always stuck with me is like, even to this day, there's two sports in baseball. You have hitting, fielding, you know, running the bases as a hitter, position play. That's one sport. And then you have a whole separate sport and it's called pitching. And it's like, I loved, 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 even going back as a young kid, like, dude, playing in the outfield, diving for balls, throwing kids out, showing off my arm, hitting home runs, hitting lasers in the gap, stealing signs, like running on, like doing that stuff, fielding, like showing off a complete athlete. Like that was fun. Like if I could have gone back, I would have loved to have been a position player. And like, I learned how to be like, that's when I treated baseball like a game when I, when I was in the dugout hitting home runs, yelling at the pitcher. But like, you got to understand, you know, when I'm 18 years old in high school and I'm six, six or six, five, you know, 200 pounds and I'm throwing 97 and I'm an okay hitter and I'm getting best, maybe like a D2 college offer. It's like $1.3 million or go play D2. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go throw, I'm going to go throw baseballs. And it's like, that's retrospect. Like that's where I messed it up. Like, 
but then again, it's like what kid? And it's like, this is my opportunity to show everybody. This is like, I walked around my chest big and like bad. And like, I had this false bravado for a few years. And I was just like this cool dude that played professional baseball. And like, I grew out of that, but yeah, man, like pitching and being a position player, two completely separate things. Pitching's like golf, and I absolutely hate golf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ty, we, we've, had, we've identified all these short-term motivators that, that you highlighted, like money and fame and proving people wrong and the nice cars and everything. Everything is short-term, and they've kind of highlighted that, you know, maybe all the glitters aren't gold when you get to be a professional athlete. And I think yeah. it's, it's really important to kind of be able to realize that in order to get a full assessment of your mindset at the time of making this decision, even though it's been building up for so long. So is it, do you think just in your travels in the major leagues or maybe in baseball in general, like through all levels of high school, do you think that this is maybe a more common theme that people or athletes are sort of sacrificing or at least putting on the back burner, their own sense of self-worth and true happiness and true passions in the chase for these kind of short-term motivators just because they think that they have to? Man, that is the golden question, dude. And that is a tricky question because the way I want to answer it, it's going to put a lot of things on blast. And it's at the end of the day, it's just my opinion. And so I'm not going to answer it directly, but I'm going to give you my best shot. My best shot is, you know, to make it to a professional sport at the highest level, man, you got to have an inner competitiveness about like, you got to be able to like compete at the highest level. You got to be able to handle pressure. And so I can't honestly sit here, man, and, and speak for other guys in the game as much as I want to. My first thought is to say, yes, I do think there are a lot of people in this game that have other passions that they would like to pursue. But then again, that could be also carried over into a lot of jobs, man. It could be the dad that worked in corporate America for 30 years that wanted to be a race car driver. It's exactly. Like, yeah. Like there, it carries into like, it, this is how our life and this is how our society's set up. It's like, we don't reward true passion. We reward like the hard work. You put your head down, you did your job. You were a man, you, you toughened it out. It's like, cool. But then again, like, why is the depression rate so high? Why is the suicide rate so high? Like, why is this whole country, you know, society comparing themselves to other people? Like, right. why do you not walk, like, why do you not walk around and see a lot of people with smiles on their face, man? Like, and so I'm trying my best to answer that, but like, it's to me, like, yeah, like there, it's not just athletes. I, I think athletes are just, in my opinion, a very high caliber competitive person and they want to win and sports allows them to show that every single day it allows people to compete maybe they're, you know maybe you don't excel into the academic side and you excel on the field and so they gravitate that's kind of what I did is I wasn't the smartest kid and so you know as a young kid you gravitate towards where you get the success from but dude like I'm a computer driven person man like I like I'm obsessed with crypto I'm obsessed with learning about business and video games and esports, Like you put me in front of a computer, man, I can sit there all day and just be a happy guy. And it's like, <laughs> but like, how do you tell a kid at, you know, six years old, seven years old? Yeah. Play video games your whole life. But like, I promise you, I would have been better than Ninja. Like I would have killed him. I would have been the best one in the world because I had passion. <laughs> and I loved it. And I'm competitive as hell. Like, so that's where it's like, it's such a tricky question, man, because at the end of the day, it's like, guys need to feed their families. You know, people have to, yeah. Like, do I want to be Ninja and be better than him? Yeah. But like, that's such an, that outcome is so un misunderstood and there's not really a goal. It's just kind of like, you know, that's why you see guys, these big time CEO and businessmen that like, they take 15 years to figure out their business and they're working in the garage. They're, you know, just sacrificing everything. And it's like, but at the end of the day, they follow their true passion and right. more times than not, they get rewarded by that. But it's like, that society doesn't want that, man. That's like the long, that's the long road. Like that's the long journey. Like you don't get rewarded. You know, you can go be a nice, have a nice cushy sales job in corporate America and have a boss and be told what to do. And then at the end of the day, it's like, are you happy? Cool. Maybe you are. But if you're not, that's, and that's when I started questioning the money side. Like when I went into the RV 
I started traveling around. I started realizing that like, tr like environments, in my opinion, directly impact your happiness. And I've been kind of on this, like this journey since when I stayed out in Arizona, I first time in a stay in an apartment, I got a nice house in the mountains. Every morning I woke up, I had a nice view and I'm like, wow, you are way happier here. You know, in the RV, you are way happier driving around, just staring at the stars. Right. And it's like, damn, like you don't need a whole lot of money. It's like money's good for a vessel to like make your life easier, but it's like you're chasing money. Like, like that's your end goal. Good luck, man. Because it's like, I, I remember sitting there in AAA making 40 K on the f f uh, first year, 40 man salary. <clears throat> and I'm like, if I can just make 500 K get to the big leagues, my life will be so easy. So easy. And guess what? I made it. <laughs> and I wanted the next step. I wanted the million dollar contract then the two, then the five, then the 10. It's like, like, I guess I, I hope that answers it, but like, that's kind of my long winded question or long winded answer. Nah, that's dope, man. That's dope. Now, you know, what's crazy, Ty, is that, you know, you embarked on this journey from when you was <clears> a little <throat> kid, you know, trying to find yourself, trying to find your identity of what you wanted to be in, you know, at 28, 29 now, you, you've realized, okay, I can be Ty again, but you don't even realize what you're doing. Like, you did it for personal reasons, right? However, I think that you're a trailblazer for opening up the, 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 the minds and the eyes of a lot of people that look okay, at Bruce a guy. Man, thank you. Yeah, like that look at a guy that says, here's a guy that got to the top level of whatever he wanted to get to. And he still wasn't happy. So why should yeah. I settle for this, this, this dead end job that I have? Why should I settle with somebody telling me, hey, you're a great speaker. You should do this. Or, hey, you can speak well. You should get into business. Like, we should never allow anybody to define who we are. And Preach. like I said, I, I commend you so much. And this is why. You know, when I heard you announce that you were stepping away from the game, I had to reach out to you because it it, it, it hit me in so many ways that you would never understand because wow. I feel like that. You know, I, I felt like that my whole life, you wow. know, in regards to people telling me that, you know, I speak well, I should do this, I should do this. But sports was always my thing. I wanted to either play it or talk about it. And people are saying, no, you shouldn't waste your time with that. You shouldn't, you gotta put yourself into, into another situation where you're gonna earn big money and all that stuff. Money was never my driving force for life. It's Good about life, it's about living. So- Yes, it so is. Speaking to you, it's like that, that connection, man. Like, you, you, like I said, you are a trailblazer for a lot of people out there. And, you know, I'll continue to support you. I'll continue to, to watch what you're doing. And, and you know, uh, uh, kudos to you, man. That's, that's all I had to say. <laughs> wow. Dude, thank you. Thank you for saying that, man. And thank you for bringing – I mean, you call me a trailblazer. I call you guys a trailblazer. I've watched your videos before I came on here, and I love the passion. You guys are authentic. You ask great questions. Um, I've been on some podcasts where it's just – you can tell they're starting a podcast – to start a podcast there's yeah. no deeper meaning behind it man and like I, you guys just asking these great questions it's like dude this is what it's about like following passion doing things for a bigger reason and it's like i promise you out there like i promise you it's going to take you time like I, trust me i'm out there finding my passion like yeah i'm throwing some weird stuff out there it's going to take me time but like i won't quit and i know you guys aren't going to quit nope and it's like at the end of the day Give us, it may take 10 years. It may take 15 years. Shit, who knows? Maybe do it in two, three. Good for you. But like, right. bro, like that's the, like, but it's fun, man. Like you guys are probably having fun doing this. And it's like, you start learning how to love the process. Like then the, the time, it's like the time, man, doesn't, doesn't matter because you love the process. That's why I wrote in that letter. I'm like, I started to hate the process. It's like, you start hating the process. You start hating waking up, going to that nine to five missing your, you know, your, your kid's graduation, all these things, and you're not following a true passion. I, man, listen, you, there's ways to make money. It's 2021, dude, you can start a side hustle. I'm not saying it's easy. Secure the bag a little bit, make sure you have it. But like your kid and your family will be okay. If they don't have the nice, nice suburbanized house or the nice car, or they don't have the coolest book bag or the coolest clothes or the coolest haircut, man. But like teach your kid the passion, man, like teach your 
they like break this stupid, like we're on this hamster wheel right now, man. You know, but I, I appreciate you saying that very seriously, man. Thank you. Thank you definitely, for saying that. Definitely, man. Definitely. So really quick, uh, Ty, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to go too hard on this because it's a really, you know, I, I think sensitive topic for a lot of people and I'm sure the sting is still there. Uh, but a couple of years ago, we lost Tyler Skaggs. Um, and you were a teammate of his for, uh, you know, I would say, you know, probably a brief period. Um, could you tell me a little bit about him and what his, you know, impact on a team was and everything like that? How was Tyler Skaggs as a guy? Man, first of all, you know, that is a sensitive topic and a sensitive question. But given how special Tyler was, I feel capable of being able to just kind of speak my personal relationship on a man. Um, that moment, first of all, that no hitter, like there's nothing. I know I just sat there and kind of bashed about my love for the game, but like, dude, first time I've ever cried in like 10 years. And like wow. first time I've ever cried on a baseball field, like I was bawling crying, man. And I'm like sitting there taking my Jersey off and I'm like, Whoa, like what, what just happened? Like this actually happened? Like, like dude, Ball and crying, like, was just mind blown for days after just realizing, like, what just absolutely happened. But, like, dude, like, I'm not going to get into anything personal, but, like, the man was a true leader. Like, an absolute person in the clubhouse that you wanted on your team. Like, treated me, a rookie, dumb rookie, with respect from the first day I walked into that clubhouse. And, like, that's all – like Justin Upton did the same thing. Mike Trout did the same thing. It's like there's veterans out there, man, that like sit there and degrade rookies and like piss on them and like treat them like dirt. It's like, I don't believe in that at all, man. Like all right. we're all trying to win this world series. Like if I don't buy into you and I got 15 years in the show, then like you're going to play with less confidence. You're going to play with your tail in between your legs and you're not going to go out there and ball out. So it's like, right. he knew that, like he was a rookie. He went through that and I'm, I'm getting heated because like he had a big impact, not heated. I'm passionate about it because he was, I just remember being like, that guy's cool, man. Like he walked around with this cool <laughs> swag. He was like Santa Monica boy. Like he had cool hair. Like he had cool swaggy clothes. Like everyone called him like swaggy T. Like <laughs> he just was a guy that was like, like he's who I wanted to be. Like he didn't do, did not care what people thought. Like wow. didn't care. And like, I admired that because that's what I always wanted to do with baseball is I wanted to be Ty and like he was Tyler. And it's like me, man, like, like I said, I'm not getting anything personal, but like to me, I have the most highest respect for him. Um, the impact he had on me, it was one of the most devastating things I've ever been a part of. Probably the most devastating thing I've ever been a part of in my life. Um, and it just was, it was crazy, man. But like, just, just a good, authentic human being, dude. Yeah. Ty, you know, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, baseball and how it has affected you and your journey and all this hard work and everything and ultimately leading your decision to, to walk away from the game. But is it, has there, were, what were some standout moments just from being a part of the game? You know, I mean, just being in the majors for however short of a long of a time it might have been, what were some, yeah. you know, positive memories, anything that you took home with you and felt really good about? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, man. And, and that's where I don't want it to get twisted is like, I sit here and I'm a very authentic, transparent person. And people may, you know, look at this podcast and be like, damn, you really hated baseball. It's like, <laughs> like, shit, like, like, yeah, the game was boring to me. Like I first <laughs> pitching. Yeah, it was boring. But like, no, man, like the, the camaraderie, like the team building aspects, the, the plane rides, like the hotels walking into these nice hotels, going to these cool dinners, going to cities that I've never been, seeing fans being yelled at. But, like, you know, highlights, man, like, um, I was obsessed. The one thing, the time, spring training, um, that was always, like, the, the coolest event. I loved anything in spring training. I just – it was, like – spring training was, like, there wasn't a lot of pressure, and it was, like, we're just out there playing ball. It's, like, you're getting your work in, so – Spring training was always something for me that always stood out. Um, specifically, um, punching guys out on three straight fastballs was the fun, best thing in the world. If I could throw all fastballs 
And if I ever come back to play, I'm going to just throw fastballs um, and just try to throw as hard as I could. I remember striking Billy Hamilton out on three fastballs and he wouldn't step out. So I threw a fastball and he didn't step out. And I literally threw it and got back on the mound and threw another one and he didn't step out again. And I literally like, as I was throwing the second pitch, I was putting my back foot back on the rubber and like, didn't even come set and threw it again. And I'm like, well, that was fun. Like, I don't know. That was, pretty, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, uh, getting out of big jams, throwing gas, dude, like looking back, seeing like the fact that I was throwing like a hundred, like that was cool. Like I love throwing hard. Like that's yeah. kind of how I tricked myself into liking baseball, but um, being a part of this, some of the cool charity events that uh, Angelton Simmons put on um, pools, put on going to those and supporting their foundations. That was what really stood out with me. I love doing those. Um, I love supporting the bigger cause outside of baseball. But I guess, man, like there was, it was, it was the show, man. Like it, it's the big leagues. Like there is, yeah. Like the fans and pitching in front of thousands of people, like seeing the stadium walk in and like running in from the bullpen. Like, I'm not trying to say like that part of baseball sucked. Like that part was awesome, dude. Like I'm talking about the strict aspect, the process. I'm talking yeah. about the grind. Like right. I'm talking about being away from your family at the end of the day dreading every single aspect every time my name's called not like nervous like this anxiety feeling that's like no part of me wants to get on this mound and go in there like no part for nine years like nine years it never went away and I did everything in the book to try to get rid of that and it's like that's when I started asking myself okay for nine years you've tried to get rid of this anxiety and it's like you know when you were a kid, yeah, you got nervous just like every other kid. Like you get people say like, yeah, it's normal to get nervous. Like I wasn't getting nervous. Like I was getting like, nope, I'm not going out there. Like wow. don't want it. That's why like if you watch me pitch, I always pitch so damn fast. Like I was trying to get on that rubber and get, and out. get out as quickly as possible. And if you wanted me to go back out for the second inning, the manager, Ty, you got two in you? Yep. <laughs> I got two of me. Here we go. And I will myself back out there, block it out, do it again. But like, you know, that that's just kind of like the warrior side of me, you know, that I'm not going to quit. But like, man, the, the the show life, like, dude, it's it's sick. Like, it's yeah. sick. That's that's what I, that's what's cool. Yeah. I still think I still think it's the single coolest thing someone can do in any sport. It's like it's posterizing someone in basketball, mossing mossing someone as a wide receiver. And then just striking someone out on a heater right down the pipe and looking at their right face and, the they, and, and they just go, nah, yep, you got me. You got me. And then they have, to do, they have to do the walk of shame back to the dugout, yep. sit there. That could be like, that he just, look. he just got, <laughs> oh, I, I, how was I supposed to hit that? Like just, it's, that's yeah. the cool, it's, I've always admired that. It's the coolest thing you can do. Listen, I, I had, even, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I, I had that on a lesser level, Ty. I used to, you know, have a little batting cage at my friend's house and it was, he used to put it on 40. And I was like, okay, well, when are you pitching? Like, when, when is the ball coming? He's like, the ball already came. I couldn't use <laughs> 40. So I can imagine 40, yeah. what, what 100 <laughs> looks like. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah, like, those guys are talented, man. It makes yeah, you think man. how those, those boys can sit there and hit 370, 350 right. with, you know, 40 jacks. It's like, those guys are talented. It's ridiculous. Man. Ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely insane. One of them was your teammate. Unbelievable. <laughs> Mike Trout is, uh, Mike Trout is going to go down as one of the best baseball players to ever play. Already is. He's ridiculous, dude. Already is. Unbelievable. I can't even, I don't even understand it. I don't, it's just, the man's <laughs> gifted, bro. He's just, he's just so much better than everybody else. He's just right. so much better. Like, it's, that's, that's the way he's just that much better. Like, there's no other way to say it. Unbelievable. All right, Ty. Uh, listen, we, we, we end every interview like this. Um, and we have different reactions. We have different answers. There are no wrong answers. You know, I guess there are, but I'm assuming you're not going to give us one. Um, who is the greatest athlete of all time in any sport? Hmm, let me go back to my deep knowledge of baseball and sports <laughs> IQ right here. <laughs> the best athlete of all time, 100% Mike Trout. Now, okay. Oh, I'm in on that. Ambo, Ambo Jackson. All right. I like that. It's a good that. one. Is that my our family's first? A big, Who goes my family's first? a big Auburn. 
you know what? Let's go. Dude, I've seen Mike dominate in football. He dominates in spike ball. He dominates every single sport. So it's like spike ball. Of like course, that. of course he does. Of course he does. <laughs> Ping pong, everything. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to say Mike. Let's go Mike Trout. I like, Mike Mike Trout. I like that. Best overall athlete. He can hoop. He can do it. He can do anything. Is that our first Trout? I think that's, that's our, our first that's Trout. Our first Mike Trout. trout. Nice. Now, Tyler, Wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a little a little alternative question here. What is the greatest video game in your opinion to you? Oh, dude, uh, RuneScape and the Halo series. Okay, okay, yeah, wow, RuneScape, man, oof, RuneScape. I spent some hours staring at a computer screen, grinding, hitting, picking, mining ore, and making it into iron bars and making it into iron weapons, dude. I spent years playing RuneScape, but I to give you guys a specific. Dude, Halo series, hands hands down. Uh, Bungie Man, Halo. I, I'm waiting for the next one to come out. I'm gonna put some hours into it and That's go cool. pro. That's cool. What's up, Sam? Saying something. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> my wife's trolling me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, Ty, listen, this was this was one of my favorite interviews that, that we've done, man. And, you know, I, I thank you for coming on the show. Like I said, man. Um, you know, if you ever want to come back and just kick the shit on this show, you can always you, you have an open invitation. So um, appreciate that, Barry. Thank you, man. A pleasure. Definitely a pleasure, man. Mike and Matt, thank you guys. You guys were this was fun, dude. This was honestly this is actually the first time I think I've actually opened up about this. There is an article. Somebody's posting something here maybe soon, but like I haven't talked to anyone. So you guys, this was cool to kind of let my thoughts decompress and, you know, say it out loud. And um, I appreciate you guys just being real and listening to me and not judging me for being a weird guy. That's the best part, man. Treat <laughs> yes, me with respect. We're, we're all weird here, man. We're all, yes, we are. Weird, weird does not mean that you're, you know, it's, it's a word that has been tossed around our, our entire life. Like, you not know, a bad it's thing. Bad. It's not a bad thing. It really isn't. Like, I'm well, weird. You should hear the conversations we yeah, have off yeah. air. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's insane. Especially these cool. two. I, I can't deal with them. I can't deal with them. <laughs> No, that's awesome, man. I appreciate you guys, man. And uh, I'll keep following the podcast and keep supporting you guys. And yeah, man, if I ever get ambitious, maybe I got some new things I could sit there and tell you guys about. I got some cool stuff planned. So Absolutely, stay tuned. Man. Absolutely. Excited, man. Ty. Thank you, man. Thank appreciate you, Ty. It. We appreciate you, brother.